I'm Aaron Honeycutt, and I operate Foxfire Taxidermy near Pittsburgh, North Carolina. I've been a full-time taxidermist for 23 years, but I did my first taxidermy more than 50 years ago. I grew up in a very rural part of Orange County. My dad was an avid fisherman and hunter, and he typically would return from a hunt with rabbits and squirrels. I'd grab a squirrel tail or a bit of rabbit fur and try to save it. My dad saw my interest in this and he showed me in the back of a magazine an advertisement for the Northwestern School of Taxidermy in Omaha, Nebraska. My younger brother and I pooled our meager resources and came up with what I think was $10.25 and ordered the correspondence course. This was in the 1960s. The first little booklet was How to Skin and Mount a Pigeon. I didn't have access to a pigeon, but I borrowed a shotgun from a cousin of mine and shot a young crow. And that crow was my first taxidermy project. And when I was 17, I mounted my first deer head. In 1997, I quit the post office and opened my shop full time. Since that time, I have been privileged to work on a lot of amazing specimens. I've been able to mount some amazing animals in this time. Um, I've worked with uh, osprey and hawks and owls and great blue heron. Um, I've worked with some unusual exotic animals. I've um, skinned and tanned a uh, snow leopard one of the rarest animals on the planet. Uh, tigers, leopards, jaguar. I mounted the pedestal mount of a Bengal tiger. Work that I've done with endangered and threatened and protected species has all been done with federal permits. This is my two-headed calf mount. Um, I named the mount Billy Bob and it is just a permanent resident here in my shop. The mannequin for this, uh, you cannot buy. I started with a bison calf mannequin, which was too large, but I cut it down and reassembled it several times, um, split it down the middle because the calf had two separate spines, um, made another neck and another head, put the mannequin all together and, and mounted the calf. I grew up in a hunting family, so hunting has always felt like a natural thing to do. I'm a hunter now. And when I hunt, I do feel uh, something of a connection with my early ancestors. I think people that are non-hunters sometimes don't quite understand a hunter. They may feel like that we just go into the woods and want to kill something. and I'm sure that there are hunters that are sort of like that. But the hunters that I know and the hunters I have met through my taxidermy business have never impressed me as people that just wanted to go kill something. We enjoy the challenge of the hunt. We enjoy being in nature as an active participant of nature. So I, I don't see hunting as a disrespectful thing to do. A lot of people might feel like a uh, deer head is just a trophy. Uh, I don't even like that term, trophy. It is a reminder of that hunt, where they hunted possibly, who they hunted with perhaps. And I think that for most of my hunters, that deer head represents a whole lot more than just a deer head. Any taxidermy mount, <clears throat> the quality of that mount depends on several things. Certainly the level of experience of the taxidermist comes into play. The type of materials that are used affect the quality of the mount. The methods that are used can affect the quality, as well as the condition of the specimen when it comes to the taxidermist. Here, I try to do what I call careful taxidermy. I give each mount that I work on 
all the time that's necessary to get what I can get from that specimen. And it is my goal always to mount these animals in a respectful way and to give my customer a product that they can be proud of. This is the pickle process uh, for deer capes. This is one of the early stages in the tanning process. This process tightens the skin on the hair roots, and this is what keeps the hair from falling out of a, uh, out of a mount. I'm going to have to shave this skin and make it thinner everywhere, and then I'll tan it. Then I'll oil it. The oil goes into the skin, and on a very molecular level, the oil penetrates the skin and, and replaces some of that natural moisture that was in the live deer skin. And the uh, skin then is ready to mount. Having started in taxidermy more than 50 years ago, I've seen a lot of change. This is an old, 50-year-old deer mannequin. It's made out of paper. It's hollow. And this is what taxidermists had available to them to do a deer head. And it is a classic just deer head, a little neck mount. There are no shoulders involved. At that time, nobody made shoulder mounts. They were just deer heads like this. And the quality is no detail hardly at all, and it hardly looks like a deer at all. Today's taxidermy mounts can be so much more using the modern mannequins. This is foam, and it's a shoulder mount, much more detail. <clears throat> from the nose to the shoulders. It's a completely different thing. Now these old eyes were simple dome. They're just a, they're just a dome. This is sort of like a glass eye you might put in a doll or something. A modern eye has got correct cornea shape. It's not a simple dome. It's, it's got the shape of the eye. This is the front of the eye and the rear of the eye. So when you put that in the deer, it's almost photo accurate. It just makes all the difference in the world. I've done a lot of different jobs in my life, different types of work. Taxidermy gives me something that I have not found in other jobs. The uh, sense of completion that I feel once a I do finish a mount is an important part of it for me. I love working with the animals. Each one is an individual to me. In fact, when I come in here to the shop to, to do this job, it really doesn't feel like work to me most of the time. It's just something that I enjoy doing. I believe that if everyone loved their work the way I love my job, we would probably call it something besides work. Yeah.